afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture. In continuation with the series on Indian sociological tradition, in today's lecture we are going to do, discuss the work of Professor TK Women. TK Women was one of the great pioneer sociologists and it is great indeed an honor to be his student and being taught sociology from him in my master's days in JNU. So let us discuss the contribution that Professor Women has done in institutionalizing and building sociology in India. So we know his full name is Tharalat Koshi Women, he is preferably called as TK Women. He has been a professor emeritus at the Center for the Study of Social System, Jawaharlal Nehru University since 2007. And prior to this, he was a uh, professor in the same department and has taught an N for decades to the students of masters. Professor Uyman was also the recipient of prestigious Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian award in 2008 for his service to the field of education. He has written immensely in the areas of social movement, political sociology, profession, social transformation and social theory. Professor Women was the Secretary General of the International Sociological Association from 1990 to 1994 and in this role he played a significant part in kind of make, taking sociology of India to global level. He was the only scholar from Asia and Africa to be elected president of this international organization. He was the chair of program advisory committee of Gujarat Harmony project for which he kind of able, able to write his observation on the Godra riot. He is also a member of Prime Minister High Level Committee for the preparation of the report and social economic educational status of the Muslim community in India. When we talk about his contribution and traverse through his long academic career and his growth as a sociologist, we see that in the beginning of his career, he was oriented to Indian situation. This often entailed a critique of Western sociology because at a time that sociology was progressing, taking its place in India, much of the theorization of society in India were done by Western colonial theorists, which was more in terms of generalization that ignored Indian data or theorized in terms of backwardness. So, it was the whole idea of considering Indian social and cultural element as backward, as inferior and always compared to the Western society which was considered as more progressive, as more developed. The Professor Women was able to go beyond the Western theorization of India and bring into a light its own contextual understanding. The book based on his doctoral thesis in 1972 was the first by an Indian sociologist to deal with social movement and his book Doctors and Nurses was the first book length study of a modern occupation because again the idea of sociology was to do with the general conventional understanding of caste, class, religion. Professor Women, Women took a step forward and did his work on the profession like doctors and nurses. When we try to understand his contribution to Indian sociology, we see that he gave us three broad orientation which he felt dominated Indian sociology. First was institutionist. This is in the sense that most of the sociologists would focus on the analysis of Indian institutions like caste, family and therefore they were able to kind of perpetuate past and cleanse it of alien accretion. So you it was a comparison of the past and the present and focus to see how the past institutions had undergone change and transformation. The second orientation is nationalist, seeing the role of sociology to promote the, an Indian version of modernity and national building. Now, if we look into Gurya's contribution, it would fall into the category of nationalist uh, orientation. 
and the third orientation of Indian sociology is cosmopolitan in which sociology is seen as nomothetic science and India as essentially the same as other society despite a few cultural specificity. So, you, with this whole idea of creating a global sociology which could be generalized to understand Indian society and whole. Now, Professor Women did not subscribe fully to any of these, neither to the institutionist, nor to the nationalist, nor to the uh, cosmopolitan, because he felt that each one of it had some amount of limitations. And therefore, he advocated his position as pluralist. Now, pluralist means that you will be able to apply different orientation by in your study, not just kind of focusing on one and negating the other. So, he advocated theoretical eclectism with attention to historical diversity and reconciliation of national and basic humanist value. So, you have to kind of in, uh, not consider these binaries and place sociology in one category. Rather, we need to kind of traverse from historical diversity to modern uh, sense of uh, assimilation from alien and the indigenous. So, pluralistic perspective, he suggested an integrated combina combination of pluralism, equality and identity. So, pluralism in, in itself implies that there could be a plural society of consisting of diverse cultural, religious and linguistic background. Now, when you have differences, it is a time that equality becomes important and because everybody is kind of concerned about identity, the problem arises when one is denied certain resources on the ground of identity. Now, according to Professor Umen, all three cannot be translated into practice if they are pursued independently. Pluralism, equality and identity have to be combined together in order to be able to cope up with pluralism. So, he was about to bring uh, the idea that Indian sociology had to function within constitutional framework of the Indian Republic and the vision enshrined in the constitution and that work brings in that if, how do we ensure the question of equality to a plural society, how to ensure that every citizen of the nation gets its rights and entitlement. This meant evolving an understanding of the Indian society with reference to the constitutional framework, with reference to the fundamental rights and directive principles which has been kind of understood. So, as sociologists, we need to understand how to kind of make the constitutional framework which was on paper applicable and empirically apply to the Indian society. So, India was perceived as an extension of past tradition and Indian sociology as something that was primarily based on this. When he is talking about sociology in India, he is also kind of giving a lot of uh, uh, ideas on the disciplinary foundation. And therefore, he also gives us the understanding of the boundary of sociology and social anthropology. Now, in earlier lectures, I have discussed that from a Western perspective, sociology and social anthropology were considered as two disciplines. There was a boundary between the two. Sociology concerned with the study of your own society and anthropology as the study of another society. Women in his work, Knowledge and Society, Situating Sociology and Social Anthropology, published in 2013, maps out the disciplinary boundary and he identifies three processual contention in sociology. Number one, the relationship between sociology and anthropology in the post-colonial country. He locates the source of the problem 
in the origin of both this discipline in the west and their journey to the colonies so if we look at it from the disciplinary origin both sociology and anthropology emerged in the west and they were able to travel from western countries to the colonial countries professor uman discusses that in the west anthropology was a product of colonialism and therefore studied other culture small scale society simple society while sociology was the product of modernity and therefore studied modern complex industrial society so an anthropologist would go to the other society developing society and study the tribe study the uh, other kind uh, developing elements of society and sociology would study the industrial complex society which was the american society themselves but when colonialism ended all these categorization this categorization of self and the other the simple versus the complex the developed versus developing this categorization became a little vague and therefore no longer relevant and much of these categorization were negated by the scholars and philosophers in non western society so in post colonial society these categories melted and understanding was developed between sociology and social anthropology in terms of the new world order and agreement was made that sociology would focus on society and social anthropology would focus on culture sociologist made the claim of scientificity so as sociology was emerging in the western society the effort was to develop a sociology of science so if we know august comte was trying to give us the laws to how we could understand society just as we were able to understand things in physical sciences professor uman argues that if matter is the object of study of material science life is the focus of life sciences culture is the central theme of social sciences and when we study so culture we cannot be totally scientific in the sense that it can have a lot of subjectivity emotions values and therefore professor uman explains that cultures are again created by specific society it's not always there it's a dynamic it's kind of changing transformations taking place therefore maintaining objectivity and like other physical sciences becomes a challenge in social science however the method practiced in social science is particularized objectivity which are specific to the context both temporally and spatially when he's telling us about the methodology how we study society how you kind of create or discipline like sociology he trails us that we need to kind of bring together these different perspective like macro meso and micro now macro perspective is large scale study meso is between the macro and the micro professor uman was to try to identify the appropriate unit of analysis in empirical researching he suggested that sociology must work in continuum with the three layers macro meso and micro it has to be a content and relation a linkage between the three the civilization can be understood as a macro unit national society can be considered as a meso unit and intra societal institutions and organization can be considered as a micro unit of analysis so when we talk about indian civilization we are doing a macro level study when we talk about india as a nation india uh, social change in india we are doing a meso level and when we go to a particular village or to a kind of understanding a particular district then it kind of comes down to a micro unit study now in order to understand the micro there has to be a linkage with the micro and the meso so continuity of 
all layers contribute to sociology in practice. Now, if we look into the perspective uh, that he followed, he know that there was a lot of critique to the western sociology and coming in into India to study the functioning of caste, the functioning of untouchability and inequality. Much of the studies by so orientalists were kind of considered as a stop a bottom approach that is they were trying to understand society from the top layer of the segment. So, it was considered as a Brahminical approach. Now, Professor Uman is suggesting the study from below. He advocated that the use of the perspective from below for the analysis of hierarchical nature of society. He further explains, if white anthropology anthropologist had constructed the primitive society, then the twice born sociologist in India had emphasized Hindu society on the basis of classical text and reproduced hierarchy. So, this is how the construction of certain categories were being done because the access to knowledge, the access to discourse was available only to one particular segment of the society. He discounted perspectives like subaltern, feminist and classical text and recognized Dalit vision to be the justified perspective from below. The perspective of location that is his second way in which he tries to understand sociology. While focusing on the location of sociology and social anthropology in the world at large and South Asian context, Professor Uman is skeptical about the internationalization of sociology. So, with the location becomes significant. He explains that when the production and distribution of knowledge is not more multi-directional in its flow, then it could lead to westernization. He was in opinion of doing away with the binaries which had been central to sociology and social anthropology. So, you had this uh, all constructed a binary between the west and the east, between the north and the south and therefore, you had theories like westernization in terms of the people moving from east moving towards west. Once we do away with dichotomies or binaries, then the understanding of the flow is always in terms of two way. It could be from the east to the west and west to the east which becomes significant. So, the, when he is trying to look into the work of the existing sociologist, Professor Uman was critical of M. N. Srinivas and his concept of dominant, uh, dominant caste. However, he appreciated Y. B. Damley's effort to de-anthropologize sociology in India at a time when there was a heavy influence of British social anthropologist. Damley was trained under Professor Gurre and advocated American sociologists such as Talcott Parson and Robert Merton. So, when we look into sociology of India, we see that in its initial stage, much of the work which was done on society in India was kind of an influence of initially a lot of British anthropologists in terms of looking into uh, religion from a Malinowski's perspective or looking into the whole idea of studying the tribe as different from caste. And then we had these sociologists who were kind of doing away with the anthropological tilt of sociology. But yet when we see there was still the influence of the American sociology. His contributions were empirical in nature and played a vital role in understanding social reality of Maharashtra, but they had always a reflection of American and Parsonian framework. So, when we try to develop a unique study of sociology of India, Professor Women in his work, Understanding Indian Society, the relevance of perspective from below, explains that Indian society in terms of four in one society. The first kind of social transformation 
includes cumulative to dispersed dominance. This is helpful to understand the concept of dominant caste in Indian society. The second major wave of social transformation refers to the gradual movement from hierarchy to equality resulting in the decline of traditional collectivism and emergence of individualism. So, when we look talk about the movement from hierarchy to equality, the discourse is in terms of uh, doing away with untouchability, caste system becoming less fluid and therefore, the joint family or marriages becomes less significant and the move is towards individual society. The third important trend of social transformation in India is the demand for equality and the assertion of collective identity. So, there is a kind of a plethora of movement based on identity, based on the right of these group identity to be equal in society and equality in the sense of having equal rights to resources. So, when we talk about equal rights, then we talk about social justice and that has to be imparted on the individual perspective rather than talking about the caste, creed or class. So, individual identity versus group identity, but it projected that individual equality per se will not emancipate them, but an attempt to reinvent the dignity in their collective identity would empower them. The fourth and the final social transformation is the movement from plural society to pluralism. All the four trend of social transformation suggested by Professor Uman have listed the transition from movement from cumulative to dispersed dominance, from hierarchy to equality and the conquest birth of individualism to the simultaneous demand for equality and identity transition. That is this transition from plural society to pluralism. So, this is how he was trying to give us a very contextual understanding of how social transformation was taking place in Indian society. Now, when we need to study the Indian society, he points out that there are three interrelated themes and these themes are significant in understanding the nature of so social transformation or in India. These themes are nation, civil society and social movement. Only a pluralist approach respective of identity equality he contends is suitable for India. So, when we look into his idea of uh, uh, studying Indian society, he kind will see how in the uh, further lecture that these concepts of nation, ethnicity, citizenship and uh, it becomes problematic. Why? Because India is a plural society and in this the, the right and uh, access to resources is equally important and therefore, over the years in contemporary India, there has been increase in identity politics and increase in the conflict over the identity based uh, resources. So, in the study of his Indian society, one of the most important core concept is the idea of inclusion. Professor Uman points out that inclusion is the buzzword in contemporary society and people from all walks of life, politics, business, academia and religion advocate it, although they do not have a shared understanding of the meaning of inclusion. The term is used in kind of very openly and fl flexibly in the sense implying that you need to include certain categories that had been excluded from programs of uh, social justice and equality and therefore right from the constitutional provision of inclusion 
to the five years plan to various programs and policies of the government to ensure that the in inclusion on becomes significant. And when he talks about this idea of inclusion, he points out the factors such as patriarchy, heterogeneity and hierarchy causes multiple deprivation for a women, Muslim women of Dalit background while an upper caste Hindu women would only face deprivation relating to patriarchy. So, when he is talking about inclusion, he says that there are certain level uh, through which inclusion has to be in implied. So, if we do we talk about is kind of double uh, or triple marginalization. So, a woman has a three level identity as a poor woman, as a Muslim woman and as a Dalit women which three goes together intersectionality it becomes significant. European colonialism, cold war and globalization are three decisive point for exclusion and inclusion. Professor Uman in his new book Social Inclusion in Independent India Dimension and Approaches published in 2014 refers to nine categories of people who are socially or politically or economically excluded in varying degrees in contemporary India. These nine categories are Dalit, Adivasis, OBCs, cultural minority, religious, linguistic, women, refugees, foreigners, outsiders and Northeast India the poor and the disabled. So, this insider outsider because is a little complicated discourse which helps us to understand the idea of inclusion. So, he was advising certain steps, four essential steps for creating an inclusive society in India. Number one, recognizing and nurturing cultural diversity by the state not privileging any one religion or language over the majority. Number two, institutionalizing political pluralism through multi-party democracy and effective devolution of political power. Number three, abandoning center peripheral distinction. And number four, delegitimizing caste hierarchy. By following these steps, he was of opinion that India could be an inclusive society. By this looking at his contribution to the emergence of the discipline, dis developing a method to study Indian society as an inclusive society be, makes us understand that contribution that he has made. For reference, it is always advisable to read the original text and these are some of the books that has been mentioned uh, written by Professor T.K. Uman and reading them will give us a very good idea of his uh, work and theory. Nature of sociological research and practice worldwide, a perspective from India, knowledge and society situating sociology and social anthropology. 1995 contested boundaries and emerging pluralism and 1986 insiders and outsiders in India primordial collectivism and cultural pluralism in nation building. We'll reading these texts will give us a good idea of the work of Professor T.K. Uman. With this I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.